When it comes to Olympic level track and field events, history tends to only remember those who ran the fastest, jumped the furthest, and pushed themselves further than their peers. Shizu Kanakuri is an apparent exception to the rule because he's fondly remembered for having the worst official time of any Olympic marathon runner in history, taking over 54 years to finish a race that he started in 1912. Although mainly known in the West for his aforementioned Olympic record, in his native Japan, Kanakuri is regarded as one of the country's finest athletes, often being referred to as the father of the Japanese marathon. In fact, Kanakuri was such an exceptional athlete that he entered the 1912 Olympics in Stockholm as a firm favorite to win the marathon after it emerged that he'd set a possible world record in a qualifying round in Japan the previous year, achieving a time of 2 hours, 32 minutes, and 45 seconds. Whether or not this was a true world record is debated, as the distance Kanakuri ran was never officially measured, and is believed by some that he only ran 25 miles instead of the requisite 26.2 for the record. Nevertheless, his long-distance running ability was well known and established by the time the 1912 Olympics rolled around. One of only two athletes Japan sent to compete in the Olympics that year, the other being a sprinter Yahiko Mishima, a lot of pressure was placed on Kanakuri to perform well as he, along with his teammate, represented the first Japanese athletes to ever compete in the Olympics. The journey to Sweden was reportedly an incredibly trying affair and involved traveling by both boat and rail over the course of about two weeks. Not wanting their skills to slip, Kanakuri and his teammate reportedly kept themselves in shape by endlessly running laps around the boat and later, when they traveled by rail, jogging around the train station whenever it stopped. Unfortunately, when Japan's Olympic duo arrived in Sweden, one of the men fell ill, although it's not clear from surviving records whether it was Kanakuri or Mishima. The local cuisine also didn't sit well with Kanakuri, further hampering his pre-race preparation. When the day of the marathon arrived, the weather in Stockholm was an unseasonably warm 32 degrees Celsius, which is almost 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Beyond the weather being less than ideal, Kanakuri chose to run in a traditional Japanese cloth shoe called a tabi. He did attempt to reinforce these shoes with rough canvas, but they still proved to be ineffective at protecting his feet from the gravel and debris strewn across the marathon's path. Another problem for Kanakuri was his, shall we say unorthodox running method by modern standards. You see, while running, Kanakuri generally abstained from drinking liquid due to the then widespread belief that sweating made a person more fatigued. While this may seem strange, it was at least an improvement on other marathon running practices of both not drinking anything and taking small doses of strychnine. In any event, the lack of drinking combined with the heat saw Kanakuri pass out from heat stroke around the halfway mark. According to Kanakuri, around this time he happened upon a garden party being held in a well-to-do banker's villa and decided to grab a drink with the host after spying that they were drinking orange juice. After about an hour of recovering, Kanakuri decided to forfeit the race and caught a train to Stockholm, where he stayed in a hotel until his boat arrived to take him back to Japan. Upon returning to Japan, Kanakuri sent the banker a scroll covered in Japanese writing that became a treasured memento of the occasion. Now, Kanakuri's choice to drop out of the race it wasn't unusual, because over half of the other 69 runners competing in the marathon that day ended up not finishing because of the heat, with many similarly passing out like Kanakuri did. Not only that, but one man, Portuguese runner Francisco Lazaro, actually died as a result of the race, having fallen unconscious about 8 kilometers from the finish line, with a reported body temperature of 42.1 degrees Celsius, that's 107.8 degrees Fahrenheit. He never regained consciousness, and he died the next morning. It was later revealed that he had covered his body with wax to help against sunburn. Unfortunately, it also prevented him from sweating properly, contributing to his death. As for Kanakuri, ashamed that he had been forced to withdraw, he never told race officials he'd dropped out, and instead he simply went home. Thus, aware that many of the racers had passed out and one ultimately died, they worried that Kanakuri could be in danger, and so reported that he was missing to the Swedish police, who fruitlessly searched for him. Weirdly, Kanakuri remained an official missing person in Sweden for about five decades, even though he competed in the 1920s Olympics in Antwerp and the 1924 Olympics in Paris. He was also set to run in the 1916 Olympics, but World War I got in the way. 
In his native Japan, Kanakuri's failure in 1912 was roundly criticized by the media, and Kanakuri himself wrote of how ashamed he was of himself. However, some coverage was more favorable, commending the young athlete for even being able to compete on the same level as the best in the world with so little preparation. He was only 20 when he ran the marathon, and had been training for less than a year. Despite this initial setback, Kanakuri became an important figure in distance running in Japan. He established the Tokyo Hakone Round Trip College Race, a relay race for university students that helped foster a long-standing love of the sport in the country, and something that led him to being crowned the father of Japanese marathon. After retiring from the sport in 1924, Kanakuri became a geography teacher. Kanakuri's performance in the 1912 Olympics would likely have been forgotten if not for his absconding becoming something of an urban legend in Sweden, with him coming to be known as the missing marathoner in Stockholm. In 1962, a Swedish journalist learns that Kanakuri was very much alive, much to the surprise of the Swedish National Olympic Committee, who made a note of it in their records. Five years later, in 1967, Kanakuri's name came up among a group of businessmen who were helping raise funds to send Swedish athletes to the 1968 Olympics in Mexico. They then hatched a novel idea. Why not have Kanakuri finish the marathon in front of the world's media as a way to score some free publicity and attract sponsors to their cause? Worried that he wouldn't take part if he knew what was going on, he was invited to Sweden under the pretense of celebrating the 55th anniversary of the 1912 Olympic Games. A curious request, but Kanakuri happily obliged regardless. It was only when Kanakuri arrived in Sweden that officials informed him of the ruse and the extent of the legend he'd inspired by disappearing all those years ago. Taking the whole thing in good spirits, Kanakuri agreed to finish the race on camera, reportedly still having the athletic fortitude to sprint the final 100 meters at 76 years old. Upon Swedish Olympic Committee representatives reading out his official finish time to the gathered press, 54 years, 8 months, 6 days, 5 hours, 32 minutes, and 20.3 seconds, Kanakuri was asked if he'd like to say a few words about breaking a world record for slowest ever marathon. Thinking for a moment, the elderly athlete shuffled to the microphone and said, It was a long trip. Along the way, I got married, had six children, and ten grandchildren. Kanakuri passed away in 1983 at the age of 92. In honor of his contribution to the sport of long distance running in Japan, the grand prize for the aforementioned relay he started was named after him. Now for a bonus fact. During his brief trip back to Sweden in 1967, Kanakuri revisited the villa he'd ended up at over 50 years prior and shared a glass of orange juice with the son of the host who'd invited him to rest with them. While the two were chatting, the son asked Kanakuri what was in the box he'd sent his father as nobody in his family could read Japanese. Kanakuri sheepishly responded that it was simply an old customs form that he had lying around and he put it in the box because it looked kind of important. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below. And if you're looking for something else to watch right now, we've got another video about a similar topic. It's the 60-hour race that's so intense only 14 people of 1,000 who entered have ever completed it. You can find a link to that on the screen now as well as below this video. Don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to like, and I'll see you in the next one.